Hello and welcome to another video on Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, we would like to discuss how can we run incremental or data load on a local SQL server using the local Python to update the data on Microsoft Fabric warehouse. So we have a warehouse on the Microsoft Fabric and there only we would like to send the incremental data. Now to do this, let's jump on to the Power BI app.powerbi.com, which is also fabric. App.powerbi.com, that's my URL. And from here, I need to open a workspace by clicking on here. So I'll click on the workspaces. And from there, I will open 01 workspace. For today's work, I'm going to create a new, which is going to be incremental. So I'll click on new and show all. Once I click on the show all, I'll scroll little bit down to get the data warehouse. And I'll click here on the data warehouse and create INCR01. Once INCR01 is created, I would like to create a set of tables. To understand what set of tables I need, let's go to my local SQL server. So let me go to my local SQL server. In my local SQL server, I have these four tables and I have created a new table also. So I created a new table, which is sales fact for which you can see the script on the right hand side. This is just a copy of the sales table, but right now it has the date. It doesn't have any data. Let me tr showcase to you. Now I would like to insert a data into it into two parts. So the first part is the data which is going to be strictly less than this date. So let me run this script now by clicking on execute and now number of rows has been inserted 14,876. Now these are the rows I wanted to move and later on I'll come back and insert the more data which should be now greater than or equal to. So I'll change the script. So when I come next time, I'm going to insert this data. Now I want to move this data to my warehouse in the Microsoft Fabric. Now to do that, let me go back to the Microsoft Fabric. And in the Microsoft Fabric, I got my schemas ready. It will show the DBO schema. While it is opening up the DBO schema, I'll bring in the scripts and I'll try to explain you what script I have. So I got the DBO schema, I'll say new SQL query and let me paste the script. So I'm going to create a table which is going to keep track of what data I have. So I'm going to create a table which is create table INCR info which will contain table name and the last collection date. So this table will maintain what data I have. So we have to remember that we update this table when we are going to call our incremental ETL. Now for the first time, I don't have any data before 2018. So I'm going to set this value as 2018-0101. It means for the sales, I need to collect data, which is more than 2018-0101. I'm using a Python code and in the Python code, I'm using SQL ACME library. And what I found out that there is a problem in creating a table with the date time data type. And to overcome that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the tables beforehand. And this is how I'm going to create this table. So I got the script from the, the same script, which I was using here on my on premise, the same script I uh, taken, I just little done a little bit of modification here. And with those modification, I am using the same script here. So I'm going to create a staging table where I'm going to host the data. Then I'm going to move this incremental data to my fact table, which is sales. Now to do that, I have created a procedure. Now my procedure inserts data into the sales table from the sales staging, staging by checking that the order ID, which is a primary key column is not present in the new data, which is the staging data. 
This is the same approach we use when we do insert and update, but I'm not doing an update here. I'm just doing an insert, but I've written a code which you can use for insert and update. It means after this, you should be able to write down a statement before the current statement that is going to update the data because we are inserting the new data. If you insert it before, then it's going to update that also. So update the data before and then going to insert it the new data. In case of update, we always check for inner join and we check for the matching records and we update all the columns. At the end of this, we are going to update the date which is there in the staging once it is successful. Now I'm creating a procedure which can do this job. It means from my local Python, I need to call this code. So my Python has to call this code and then I say select this thing and then run. So now you can see the date is this and onward this date onward the code should be loaded. Now to get the URL, you can click on the settings. Let me showcase you again. So click on the settings and copy this URL, the connection string. And this is the same thing which we are going to use in our local Python code. Let me open the local Python code and explain you. My local Python code today has few parts. The first part of the local Python is to get the date which is available. So it's going to do nothing but going to get the date which is available. So I'm going to use the server database driver, which is going to be ODBC driver 17 for SQL server, username and password. Now the way I have coded this one that is going to open the pop-up. So it's not the automated version. It's going to open a pop-up and I need to give a password. Then I have a connection string, which I'm building using the SQL Acme code. The SQL Acme code is the thing, something which I'm using. And then I'm building my query, select Colias max of collection date and, and Colias I'm using if the collection date is blank or it is null, then I'm initializing it with 2018, but that would not be needed because we already have a date there. But even if you don't have, it's going to initialize it there. And then we run this query and we get a date. Now this date I'm using in constructing my query where I'm saying select start from DBO sales fact where sales is greater than this max date. And then I'm using the local database in the local database. You have to take care that you are using this double black slash. If you are also using SQL express like me, or even if your database is a local database, uh, you have to use double backslash if there is a backslash requirement, then I'm using trusted connections equal to yes, because I'm using windows authentication. Then I run the create the engine and then I run this SQL query, which gives me a pandas data frame. The entire objective of doing this is to get this pandas data frame. So my second part is completed. The first part was to get the max state. The second part is to get the data. And again, in the third part, I'm just reiterating the same details again, uh, so that you know that what server is going to be the, so again, I'm going to give the details. These are the details for my warehouse. So, so first I given warehouse details, got the data again, I'm giving the warehouse detail. And now this time I would like to insert. So I connect and this time the create engine statement is little bit different. So in the create engine statement, if you see, I have this connection string eco true connect arguments, auto commit true and fast execute I equal to true. Then I go ahead and write down my table name, which is staging where I'm going to load this data type it append. If it exists, we should append. I can use replace here with pretty well because it should replace, but to, if I want to avoid this replace, I can truncate my table here. But even if I don't do the delete from my table, this code is going to work because look at this code. This code is only going to insert the incremental, but we don't want that. We want to truncate this staging table. So we will add this code. So how do we do this? So to that, you can do the alter procedure. So now I add that statement and now you realize because I have used append there. I, if I use replace, I don't need that. Okay. So now index equals to fall chunk size. I'm set up setting up 50, but I think hundred, 150, you should be able to set easily. And method is multi multiple insert. And then I use this code with engine dot connect as connect 
and execute this procedure load sales. So this is going to insert the data and this is going to call the procedure load sales. So once the data is inserted, it's going to move the data into the sales table. Now the code is ready. I'm going to do the necessary replacement in the file, which is next place the things into the next file, which is available next to it. And I'm going to run this incremental procedure PY. It has same code what you have seen previously. And once this code is run, we are expecting to get the rows there. So let me run this code now. So let me press run, run without debugging. The thing which I'm expecting here, it should open a pop-up and that should ask password from me. It has opened the pop-up on the another window. I'm giving the password there. I have given the password. It's running the script. It started loading the data. Now it's going to take a little bit of time to load this data because there is a chunk size of 50 and it's going to take few seconds. Now this is method because it's also printing is going to be a little bit slow. So data load has been completed and now let's go ahead and look at what kind of data has been loaded into our um, schema, the warehouse schema. So I'm going to go ahead and write down a new query and let me take the name of the table. This table as we are truncating should not get any data, but let's check it out. So select count star from sales staging. So there are no rows as expected and let's check out the sales table. We have 14,876 rows. That's what we inserted. So now what we want, we want to add more rows. So to, we'll go to our local SQL server. I already created the script previously and you can see these are the same number of rows which got inserted there. If you have noticed, now I'm going to run this statement to get the additional data, which should make it 30,000. So I run this. Now let me count the data in the sales fact. This is 30,000 now. So now what I need to do is I need to run my script again. Now, before I run the script, I'm going to do a uh, one change here. I'm going to go and in the second statement, I will make this echo false. I don't want to now print these statements. And after doing this, I'm going to run this incremental code again. Okay. So let me say go and run without debugging. It should again show me a pop-up, which it is doing. I have given it and it is started and this time you will see that there will be no scrolling of the code which is coming in and the scrolling of the code has stopped now and it will finish in some time and once it is finished we will go back and change how many rows we have. We are expecting 30,000 rows only the incremental data and remember even if I have used a date which gives me overlapping data here in the my uh, fact table it would not have taken that overlapping data because we have already have a code that order number should only be unique. We are treating order number as the primary key in our code, the way I've written the procedure, the procedure I'm going to provide you inside the description or on a blog and same way the Python code I'm also going to provide to you. So with the help of that Python code and the procedure, you should also be able to do the things at your hand. The tables which I've created here are the same tables which I'm creating from my GitHub and you can get the data for these tables from the GitHub from the CSV files. So once this data is loaded at that we will end. we will not check this data on Power BI. This is the same data which we are using for some time. I just wanted to show you incremental in today's video and that too using the local on-premise Python code, which is running from the my desktop or my laptop. And also the database is also local. And I have used the authentication method, which is a MFA multi-factor authentication method based on that I'm running this code. So once it is complete, let's validate the data and wrap it up. So data has loaded again. Let's go to the uh, 
Microsoft Fabric Data Warehouse and check out what kind of data we have now in our sales table. So let me run my sales table. I'm expecting 30,000 rows here and exactly we have that much. We can quickly have a look at data by uh, clicking on the table to have a preview of the data or you can right click and say new SQL query and you can look at top 100 rows. You can remove all of them and then check out the complete data. You can run various SQL or you can create a new Power BI report by using the new report option under the data or under the model. So why don't you go ahead and try this out and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.